Hello. Today we're going to talk about pedals on the harp and go over some information that might be useful to you if you've just started playing a pedal harp. Uh, to begin with, let's talk about how harps work mechanically because they're fairly unique in the way that they're constructed. So a harp is just a frame with strings. And one of the big challenges that harp makers have had over the years is how to fit enough strings into their frame. This harp, which is the largest size of harp, has 47 strings from here up to here. And a piano has 88 keys. So you can imagine that if you tried to make the harp the same as the piano, you just kept adding more and more strings, very quickly the harp would be gigantic. It would be unplayable. So what harp makers have done instead is they've made it so that each string has more than one position. So that way, when you count all the in-between positions, the harp has almost the same range as the piano with its 88 keys. Um, and as clever as this idea is, it's not terribly unique. All string instruments use this idea. They just approach it a little bit differently. So you can imagine that if you've got um, a violin or a guitar, you play with one hand, and with the other hand, you can shorten the length of the strings. So on the violin, you have your four strings, and then you just set your fingers down to, um, to shorten the length of the strings, and you have many more options for notes than just those four strings. On the harp, we have the same idea, but everything is done mechanically. For example, let's use this F string right here. So when I play this string, it's vibrating from the bass here all the way to this pin up here. That is the vibrating length of the string. So we can adjust the vibrating length of each string. Rather than starting here in its longest position, we can rotate this disc. Now the vibrating length begins here and goes down, making the sound higher. And we can do that one more time. Rotate this disc. Now the vibrating length begins there. So our string is even shorter and our sound is even higher. And we can do that with all of the strings. They all have these three positions. If we take this E string, right now it's in its longest length. The sound is coming from there. Then we rotate the disc. The sound gets sh short. Um, the string gets shorter. The sound gets higher. And we can do it one more time, making the vibrating length of the string even shorter and the sound even higher. So we have this mechanical system where each string has three positions. And then the question is, how do you make this mechanical system work? How do you engage the discs so that you can change the position of the strings? And this, of course, is where the pedals come in. So all of these discs, all of these moving parts, connect through the column of the harp, which is hollow, down to the base of the harp and the pedals around the base. So that way you can be playing and changing the position of your strings with your feet at the same time that you're playing. And of course, we can't have um, one pedal per string. That would be far too many pedals for the harp. Again, we run into size problems. So what is done is that uh, each pedal controls a full set of strings. So there's one pedal that moves all the C strings simultaneously. One pedal that moves all the D strings simultaneously. And so on and so forth. So we have seven pedals around the base of the harp. So one of the first things you want to learn really well when you start playing the pedal harp is the order of the pedals. Here it is, starting on the left side. We have the D pedal, C pedal, and B pedal. You use your left foot for those three. And then on the right side, we have the E pedal, F pedal, G pedal, and A pedal. You use your right foot for those four pedals. Now this might seem like a bit of a strange order, but the idea is that if you're moving through keys, then you can alternate feet. So if you were going to the key of G, you'd need an F sharp. Then the key of D, you'd need a C sharp. Then the key of A, you'd need a G sharp. And you can see that that keeps switching back and forth, right and left, right and left. Uh, there are a couple of handy sayings you can use to help you remember the order of the pedals. They're a little bit silly, but here they are. The first one is, did Columbus bring enough food going to America? Um, that one's quite popular. I also really like this kind of funny one. Dogs can bite elephants for great amusement. And, of course, as with any saying, really you just want it to be a tool. So your goal is to learn the pedal so well that you don't need the saying anymore. Um, you could practice this any time, whether or not you have a harp with you. You could just see if you could do the pedals in order, B, C, B. E, F, G, A, and you can see if you could do it backwards, A, G, F, E, 
B, C, D, you could try going inside out, uh, B, E, C, F, D, G, A, all of that kind of thing, anything so that you learn the order really, really well. Now let's talk about the three positions of each petal. So just as we saw earlier, each string has three positions, so therefore each petal has three positions. When the petal is up, the string is in its longest position. When you move the petal to the middle, then the string is in its middle position. And when you move the petal all the way down, then the string is in its shortest position. So therefore, when the petal is up like this, since this is our B petal, we have a B flat. In the middle, we have a B natural. And in the very bottom position, we have a B sharp. Some people find this confusing because they want the pedals to match the way piano keys work, so that if you go down, you're going to a flat, and if you go up, you're going to a sharp. Um, but it's the opposite way around, although in a way it's completely logical because then it just mirrors what the string is doing at the top of the string. So we have flat, natural, and sharp. So now that we've talked about the way the harp is set up and the way that the pedals function, I think it's time to go ahead and start moving some pedals. And your goal in this is to be as silent and discreet as possible. So you want someone listening to you play to be focused on the sound that the strings are making and not notice that you happen to be moving a bunch of pedals in the middle of the piece. And the way to do this is to be really controlled in your movements of the pedals and to be really precise in the the pattern of movement that you're making. So first let's take into account uh, the shape of the wood that surrounds the pedals. You can see it makes kind of a zigzag. I'm going to move this pedal to flat so you can see it even better. So the shape of the wood, it starts and then it comes down and then it goes in and then it goes down and in again, kind of like a bolt of lightning. And when you're moving the pedals, you really want to try to mirror that shape. So let's start by moving pedals from natural up to flat. And keeping the pedal under the ball of your foot, you want to match that shape so you'll come out to the left and then gently ease the pedal up to flat. You can do the same thing with this D pedal, moving it out to the left and then easing it up to flat. And then one more time with the B pedal, out to the left, easing it up to flat. So if you're moving pedals on the right side of the harp, everything is quite similar, except of course for one thing you're using your right foot rather than your left foot and um, the pedals are a mirror image of each other so your zigzag is the opposite shape so then when you're moving you have to slide the pedal to the right to bring it up slide it out to the right gently ease it up out to the right letting it come up and one more time with the a pedal out to the right and then easing it up so now let's talk about bringing the pedals back from flat into natural Many people, when they first start playing the pedal harp, find this a little bit harder than the opposite for a couple of reasons. But your goal is just to do everything in reverse. You just want to bring the pedal straight down and then slide it in. Um, one problem that a lot of people have is they have trouble getting it to come straight down. So if you're having that trouble, what you want to think about is having the pedal stay along this line, this outside piece of wood where it kind of hugs that. Many people think about bringing it down and a little bit to the outside or to the left while they're bringing it down in order to get it to do that. The next problem that a lot of people have is that it's really easy to catch this corner right here and have your pedal make the shape of um, maybe say the backwards letter J rather than a nice crisp L shape. So if you catch that corner, it's quite noisy. You hear a bit of a thunk when you do that. So instead what you want to do is you want to bring it down into the left, hugging an outside piece of wood. Then ideally you want to rest it on this notch here and then slide it over and in. That's how you get a really quiet pedal going from flat to natural. Here it is with the D pedal. You come straight down, rest it on that notch of wood, and then slide it in. And one more time with the B pedal, bringing it down a little bit to the outside, rest it on the notch, slide it in. So now we'll do all of that in reverse on the right side. So again, everything is in a mirror image. So you want to bring your pedal down and a little bit to the right, hugging the outside, and then slide it in. So here's the F pedal, hugging the outside of the wood down into the right, resting on the notch, and then gently sliding it in. The G pedal, same thing. And one more time with the A pedal. This pedal feels really far away, so you really have to kind of feel like you're, you're going very much to the right and down, rest on the notch, and then slide it in. 
So you might be thinking that I'm making this look really easy and that my petals are very controlled, but yours are bouncing all over the place. They're slipping out of their notches or they're kind of jerky going between positions. And that's all really natural when you first start doing this. It's not nearly as easy as it looks. In fact, the petals are connected to a large spring inside the base of the heart. And that spring has a lot of tension in it, so it's not natural to be able to get the petals to just move so smoothly and serenely between positions. Um, but of course, that's where practicing comes in. <laughs> I think it's great to just practice moving the petals like this without any playing. Move all of the different petals between all of the different positions several times um, each day until it starts to become easier and feel a lot more controlled. Let's go ahead and try moving some into sharp. So moving from natural into sharp is very similar from moving from flat into natural because we're still just going down. So we have to go down and then slide again. And all of the ideas are the same. If we take the C pedal here, you're gonna feel like you're coming down into the outside a little bit to the left. Then you rest on the bottom of the harp and then you slide it in. We'll do the same thing with the D pedal, bringing it down to the outside, hugging that outside piece of wood resting it there, and then sliding it in. And finally the B pedal, bringing it down, resting it, sliding it on over. And going back to natural is very similar uh, from going from natural to flat. So you do everything in reverse. You slide out, try to touch that outside piece of wood, and then gently ease the pedal up. Slide it out to the left, but it's still down on the base of the harp and then ease it up, and one more time, sliding out, gently letting it come up. And here we are on the right side one more time, so we're going to do all of the same things. Here's the E pedal, bringing it down into the outside a little bit to the right in this instance. Rest on the bottom of the harp, and really feel like you're pressing down right here, and then slide it in. F works the same way. G pedal, hugging the outside, resting on the bottom, feeling like you're pushing down hard, then sliding it in. And then the A pedal, last one, pressing it down and very much to the right, and then finally sliding in. And then of course we can do the opposite to go back to natural. So starting with the A pedal, sliding it out, feeling the outside piece of wood, and then letting it come up. G pedal, sliding it over to the right, letting it come up, F pedal, out to the right, but still touching the bottom of the harp, easing it up to natural, and finally, the E pedal. Now, one very practical consideration that I haven't yet mentioned is what to wear on your feet when you're moving pedals. Um, and this is definitely something that you should give some thought to because the right shoes can make pedaling a lot easier, and shoes that aren't very practical can make it a lot harder. By this point, you're probably really well acquainted with what my shoes look like, but here they are, just so you can get a good glimpse. Um, these are my favorite harp shoes at the moment. I like to wear a pair of kind of low heels, and what I look for when I'm shoe shopping is I like to have a closed toe, so I don't have to worry about my toes and the bottom of the shoe um, getting all kind of caught up in the pedals, and I like to have a closed heel so that my heel isn't wobbling around back there. Then I like to have a low heel, but not a stiletto or anything crazy like that. And I like the shoes to kind of match the shape of my foot as closely as possible, so no really pointy toes or nothing sticking out wide on the sides or anything like that. Um, and this is a really popular option for many harpists to play in a pair of kind of uh, a low heels, because then you can pivot on that heel moving between pedals. Some harpists also like to play in flats, which I do occasionally. Um, especially for rehearsals when I don't need to look quite so fancy. So here are my flats, and it's the same kind of thing. They really hug the shape of the foot. There's nothing extraneous going on, and you can reach the pedals quite easily with those as well. So always a good idea to think about what kind of shoes you want to wear. Good to practice in your shoes, especially when you have a big performance coming up so that it doesn't feel different when you get on stage. So everything we've talked about today has been about physically moving the pedal, the foot on the pedal. And that's crucial to be good at pedaling. You have to be able to be silent with your feet and controlled with your feet. Once you can do all of that, the next step is to think about um, 
moving the pedals while you're playing the strings. And this requires being really precise at the moment when you've changed the pedal. So let's say, for example, that I play a C major chord, and then I'm going to play a C minor chord. You have to move the pedal at exactly the right moment, not too soon, not too late, so that you don't have any extraneous noise with the strings or any buzzing, anything like that. Um, so the best way to practice that, of course, I think, is to do it. And beginning pedal harp music is usually written so that there's just a couple of pedals throughout the piece, so that when it comes up you can really focus on it, which is great. And frequently you use the same pedal or the same couple of pedals, so you don't have to be jumping around like crazy down in your feet. Because I've spent so much time um, thinking about this and teaching people how to do this, I've also written a book of pedal exercises that I use with my own students, and I think they find really helpful. Um, it starts with some of what I was showing you earlier, where you're just moving your left foot between flat and natural, and natural and flat, going back and forth, back and forth. Then the second exercise is all about your right foot doing the same kind of thing, and so it moves really incrementally. Um, pretty soon you're practicing moving two pedals at once, one on the left side, one on the right side. Um, and then it starts to do uh, more advanced pedal techniques, like moving two pedals but having one go to sharp and one go to flat. So they're moving in opposite directions and things like this. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link below in the description. Uh, thanks so much for watching.